Welcome back. I hope those examples illustrate the uh, underlying assumptions and the rationale behind the residual income valuation model. In this video, we're going to apply this model to value a couple of companies. So first of all, let's extend the, uh, the model itself. We know that the value of a firm is, is a present value of its future return back to the investors. So the residual income valuation model uh, is slightly different because we start with the book value. So the value of the company is defined as the initial book value plus the present value of all future residual income. So this first part is relatively uh, strict. So we have three components. The first component is the book value. The second component is the forecast horizon. Uh, by now, you, uh, we, we know that we cannot forecast forever. So we have to identify a forecast horizon. So this is the residual value during the forecast horizon. And then we have the continuing value, which is similar. So we def this is the residual income in the long term. So this G here, once again, is the long-term growth rate. So these are the three components, the initial book value, the residual income, or the present value of the residual income during the forecast horizon, and then the present value of the continuing value um, the beginning at the end of the forecast horizon. So let's take a look at the continuing value. We use the continuing value, we develop it as a growing perpetuity. So is the residual income divided by the difference between the cost of equity and the growth rate. So in re Redefining this, instead of carrying all this term, we can set it up as the initial book value. So this is in year zero. Uh, this this form this setup is much easier for Excel. So for the initial time during the forecast horizon until the very last year, the uh, the value to be discounted back is just the residual income. In the very last year, the value to be discounted back is the residual income, which is this first component plus the terminal value. So this uh, expression makes it easier to set up the model in Excel. So again, the uh, definition V is the value today that we are estimating. CI is comprehensive income. BV is book value. And RE is the cost of equity or the required return. T is our forecast horizon. And G is the long-term growth rate for the comprehensive income. And just remember that um, if this does not always occur um, at the end of each year, so we will apply a mid-year adjustment. So the, the mid-year adjustment is to multiply the value that we estimated by one plus uh, half of the cost of equity. So that's just the, the mid-year adjustment. Okay, so this may seem a lot. Um, the good news is we will do all this in Excel. So let's go right ahead and look at an example. We'll have two, we'll have two, one more example after this, but in this example is relatively straightforward. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video uh, and open up Excel and take a good look at this, uh, at the information. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set up the model in Excel, including an assumption area, the model itself, and then um, we can also do sensitivity analysis. So I encourage you to write down this information on a piece of paper. It's not a whole lot so that you can follow along and see how you can set up um, a model by clearly defining the assumption area, the model area, and then later on uh, to do sensitivity analysis. So the company we're analyzing is Morrissey Tool Company. So we want to make sure that we clearly label 
what is our assumption and what is our model. So these are some of the important assumptions that we were provided. Uh, the company is expected to pay out 30% in dividend. And the beginning book value, so book value in year zero is 1, 111141 dollars. Um, cost of, of equity, remember this is the required return, is 12%. And the long-term comprehensive income growth rate after year five, and this is important, is going to be 5%. In addition to that, the company, uh, the analyst provided forecasts of comprehensive income. And those go from year plus one to year plus five. We have five years of forecast horizon. And we were given those, so we just type them in. So these are all assumptions. So everything in the assumption area are values. So we can just type the numbers in. Okay. This is a relatively simple problem, so I want to I want you to actually learn how to set up the um, the model completely on your own instead of just using a template that's being provided. So this is our assumption area. Uh, next, we're gonna put in the the model. So again, clearly label what you're doing. So to, to use the residual valuation, income valuation model, we need to compute um, residual income. So we need to do a couple of things. So to, do, to compute the residual income, we need to know the book value each year. And since we know that the company pays out 30% of dividend, uh, book value will change. So first item, we we're gonna start with comprehensive income. Now notice that even though this is the same as what the analyst provided, it's important to separate the model area from the assumption area. And you, we can copy the heading down. Uh, and then we will compute dividends. So we, remember we know that dividend is 30%. So we take comprehensive income times dividend of 30%. Since it's going to be 30% each year, we'll make the reference to the dividend payout ratio of 30% an absolute reference. So we can copy this over. And then we can compute the book value of equity. I'm actually going to add a year here, year zero. So book value in year zero is your initial book value. Once again, we keep the model separate from the assumption. And then the book value next year is last year's book value plus income minus dividend, right? That's how book value will go up. And once we have book value, we can compute the, um, the subtraction. So I, I'm, I'm separating out the equation um, into different elements in Excel. So we so far in the model we have comprehensive income. So next thing I'm going to compute is cost of equity times the period book value. So I'm going to say subtract cost of equity times book value. Beginning. So this is important. So we'll take the cost of equity, which is 12%. Again, that will not change. 
times beginning book value. So that's our beginning book value. And then we can compute the residual income. Re residual income is comprehensive income minus this now once you get more familiar with this comp you can you can skip this line you can create you can compute residual income in one formula um, so if you want to do it in one formula you will set this as residual income is equal to comprehensive income minus cost of equity times the period's book value of equity so obviously the two gives you exactly the same answer. I just added an extra line here to show you how to uh, separate a formula into multiple parts. You can, as you are more familiar with a model, you can combine them so that your, your, um, your model will be easier to read. Okay. So once you have this, we can copy this over for the five years. Okay. So we have residual income from year one through year five. The next thing we need, so let's take a look at the formula we have. So we have comprehensive income from year one through year five. So we have all of this. The next thing we need is the continuing value. So I'm going to put all this formula in one go and show you how you can do that. So remember, uh, again, write this down so you don't have to memorize it. So, as, so that you can have the formula next to you as I create, uh, apply this in Excel. So this is the continuing value at year plus five. So this is not the present value. It's just, this is just the continuing value. And that is equal to the comprehensive income in year five times one plus the long-term growth rate minus the cost of equity times the previous book value, so the book value of year five, and then divided by the difference between the required return minus the growth rate. So notice how I put all the individual, the entire equation into one formula. So this is the exact opposite of what we did here. In here, we separate the formula into its two parts. So we take comprehensive income, we subtract the product of cost of equity times the period's book value. Here we put all the elements into a single formula. So once we have the residual income, we want to add uh, the continuing value, we want, the, we want to add the two together. And the reason we need to do that is um, because Excel requires all the value that occur in the same year to be combined. So once we have created this part, then we can use uh, the net present value function in Excel to compute the, um, the present value and we'll discount that using the cost of equity. So that would give us a value at year zero. So use the MPB function. The discount rate is cost of equity. And then the value is the residual income starting in year one through year five, including the continuing value. So this is the present value of residual income. So the value of the firm at year zero, let's go back and take a look. Value of the firm at year zero is called the book value plus all this. So the Excel formula we just put in computed the present value 
of all residual income, including the continuing value. So this is the part that we computed in Excel. Now we have to add back the book value. So value at year zero is the book value, beginning book value, plus the present value of the residual income. And then we can add the mid-year adjustment. Remember, mid-year adjustment is the value times 1 plus the cost of equity divided by 2. Here is how you apply the residual income valuation model. As I mentioned, we can also do sensitivity analysis. Um, you can choose two variables. We oftentimes include the long-term growth rate. In here, the base case is 5%. We can go from 3%. Um, and then the other variable we may want to look at is cost of equity. Or you can also choose the dividend payout. So I encourage you to experiment with that. So let's say it can be 10%, 11%. And we want to see the impact on the value of the firm. So once we set up our data table, we can go to data, what if analysis, data table, row, again, row here is the cost of equity. The column is long-term growth rate. So we want to check to make sure that our base case check out. So our base case is 12% and 5%. So yes, our base case check out. As I said, I encourage you to try using the dividend payout ratio as a sensitivity analysis to see how does that affect the firm's value. I hear, not surprisingly, the lower the cost of equity, the higher the growth rate, the higher the firm's value, the higher the cost of equity, the lower the growth rate, the lower, we, the lower will be the firm's value. We'll end this video here. In the next video, I'm going to go over Another example where we're going to apply multiple valuation model uh, to evaluate the same company. See you soon.